we did it. We finally did it. We are at 200 subscribers. This is kind of insane. Now, I know that I've mainly been doing craft videos and stuff like that, but I kind of don't know what to build as a 200 special. But in one of my community posts, I did get asked if it was possible for me to do a collection tour, because I do the toy reviews as well. Why not? That sounds pretty good for a 200 special, right? I've been collecting for like 10 years now, which means I have quite a few. <laughs> I've no idea how long this video is going to be, but please stick around. And if there's any figures you see on my collection that you want me to review in greater depth, then please let me know. I'm going to get around to them all eventually, but this is to give you an overview of what to expect in the coming years. So to do this, I think we're going to format it by starting from the bottom and working our way up. Now, I like to organize my Transformers in vague groups, even if there doesn't really seem to be any. To start off with, we're going to be looking at my, I guess, Michelinus. This includes figures with their very own unique aesthetics. We have Animated Bulkhead, Animated Retgar, Cyberverse Deluxe Hot Rod, Megatron, Bumblebee, Scout Class Megatron, Scout Class Megatron again, Scout Class Starscream, and also Scout Class Scraplet. Not to mention Earthspark Twitch, G1 Slug, and our old retro figure I've got that's, I believe, an asteroid or something like that. Most of these figures I've had for a decent long time, right? Like animated Bulkhead and Redgar, easily eight years. The Cyberverse Deluxes are pretty fun too, and Earthspark Twitch is a new favourite figure of mine. I'm loving the show, and the figures seem to be reflecting that. Of course, having G1 Slug pride and centre, I mean, it's my main G1 figure. I've got Grit, but Slug is a dino bot. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Moving on to the next shelf along, and we got a diorama that a lot of you might recognise. It's my Cybertron diorama. It's my second ever video on the channel, and my first video to get over a thousand views. Now, this theme is obviously Cybertronian, so it's all figures that either have unique Cybertronian modes or don't necessarily have an Earth mode equivalent. So we have Siege Prowl driving down the tunnels at the front, Siege Impactor getting ready to wreck and roll, my second ever Transformer, my 10-year-old Cybertron Bumblebee, Netflix Elite One, who fits in this pretty dang well, and finally, Pat the Primes of Ryan Pax. I really like this robot mode of his, and the leader class size is a bit too big for my scale, so I prefer to keep him in this mode. I think they all fit really nicely, especially with the lights. Moving up to layer number two. We're starting off with my aligned continuity shelf. This has got figures from Prime, Robots in Disguise. In the back, we've got Weaponizer Optimus Prime, complete with those spring-loaded machine guns. We've got Predaking at the back, who's one of my favorite figures. Transformers Prime, Robots in Disguise, Soundwave, who apparently is rare now? Clef Jumper, I've got a review on him if you want to go check it out. Legacy RC, she fits in decently enough with the rest of them. Then we've got Robots in Disguise, Strongarm, Fixit, Sideswipe, Steeljaw, and tries to shot. And to cap it all off, we got my Beast Hunter's Wheeljack. Unfortunately, he's missing half of his windows, but that's okay. Sliding on over, we got my Prime Wars trilogy shelf. Technically, I have more figures in this from the Prime Wars, but they're spread out across the other shelves. In the back, we got Superion towering above them all. Then we got Combiner Wars Hotspot in the middle, with Fix It to his left and Rook to his right. Again, Rook's rare now? I didn't know about half of this until people were talking about it online. I was like, huh, okay. And finally, Power of the Prime, Snarl, who's got one of my favorite beast modes out of any of the figures I've got. Moving on over to square three of shelf two, we've got the Micromasters. Well, mostly Micromasters. In the back, we have Leader Class Titan's Return Blaster, who's then surrounded by Sound Barrier, Twincast, Primer Prime, Metal Hawk, Blastmaster, Fuser, a teeny tiny stash scream, Skullgrin, Grit, Terrible, Brawn, Red Heat, Teeny Tiny Bumblebee, Smashdown, and Big Daddy. That's a uh, interesting name. Moving right along, we got my Movieverse shelf, which as you can see is uh, a little bit barren. <laughs> We've got Dark of the Moon Met Tech Bumblebee, Studio Series Dino, Age of Extinction One Step Changer Slug, and Dark of the Moon Met Tech Skids. I must admit, the figures I've got are all pretty decent, but my favorite has to be Slug, just for the fact that he can go back and forth, back and forth. Now we're starting to get to the big boy shelves. These are the ones where I knocked out the middle block so I can have an even bigger display. Up first, we have my seasons two and three Autobots. You might notice they got a diorama around them. I'm gonna touch on that at some point in a future video. For now though, taking a look at the figures, we have 86 Slug, who's absolutely massive compared to all of them. We've also got the Headmasters Retro Edition Brainstorm, Thrilling 30 Scoop, complete with Hot Punch and Caliburst. 
Then we have Titans Return Chrome Dam, who's actually the first ever Transformer I bought in New Zealand. Moving on, we got Titans Return Seat Spray, who's one of my favorite Legends class. Then Legacy Skids, he's one of my favorites. Wish you'd transform a little bit easier, but still a fun figure. Moving on up, we got Earthrise Grapple. Yeah, he needs a video solely just talking about the peg issue. Now we got Titans Return Chrome Dome. No, I don't have the Legacy one. I don't want it. I like the one that's like a round little dish boy. Then we got Beachcomber. Sad, dude. Legacy Eject, who's clear plastic, does terrify me, and I don't breathe near him. Titans Return Hot Rod. That's second Hot Rod. Keep counting because there's a few of them. <laughs> then we got Earthrise Ironworks and Siege Six Gun. And yeah, I really love these sort of modulator weaponizer figures. They're always really fun to mix and match. Moving on, we got Kingdom Tracks. I actually like this figure. It's got a brilliant alt mode. It's just his knees suck. Next up, we have Legacy Blaster to go along with that Eject from earlier. He's easily one of my favorite figures I own. If you can still find him, please do. He's really good. Maybe get Twin Cast. He's out now. Next, we got Mainframe, who turns into Teletran 1. He's like the nerdiest fan service. He comes with like the golden discs, he turns to Teletran, he's got the little tiny Optimus. And he's an action master? Now for one of my pride and joys, Kingdom Rodimus. See, Hot Rod's one of my favorite characters. His whole transition into becoming a prime and everything, it's one of my favorites. And when they made Kingdom Rodimus a commander class, he was all fancy with the articulated fingers, the giant trailer, the sword, blast effects. It's just, it made me really happy. Going from happy to evil, it's time to slide on over to the Decepticon shelf. This one needs a diorama. I'm gonna slide on that soon. Up front, we have Core Class Megatron. I love his vehicle mode, and the fact that his barrel tip is the mini gun is just really fun. I've got the full of Cybertron laser beak, who's spring loaded. He's like the ultimate fidget toy. Legacy Iguanus, a really fun figure, and if you don't already have him, go and find him. He's like the Core Class equivalent of Blaster, just really fun and well put together. Power of the Prime's Road Trap. You might notice a lot of my Decepticons are like Road Trap, where they're from that sort of 87, 88 timeline. I really love those designs. Season 3 and 4 was my favorite, so a lot of the Decepticons I have are like him. Next to him, we got his Duocon buddy Siege Skytred, my first ever War for Cybertron figure, and definitely set the standard for me. Next, we got Power of the Prime's Counterpunch, the original release. Again, another rare figure I own, and definitely one of my favorites. I love the whole spy gimmick. As you might notice, I don't have that many Decepticons compared to Autobots, so he kind of lives in permanent counterpunch mode just to fill up the ranks a bit. Next up, we got Titans Return Galvatron! He was one of my first Titans Return figures and really got me to love the whole Headmaster Titan Master gimmick. Now we got that full Cybertron Soundwave to go with Laserbeak, and his whole chest system is designed to deploy him. Sometimes it works. Below him, we have Legacy Kickback. I really love the Insecticons, and I'm hoping I can find Shrapnel soon. On the other first side, we have Titans Return Weird Wolf, another one of those later year figures with those brilliant yellow and blue colors. Sadly, with Weird Wolf, even on the reissues of this mold, he slowly wants to die. What I mean by that is plastic is snapping off, rubber is degrading, look at his teeth! And this isn't from me just trashing it around. The materials they used and the mold itself is kind of poorly put together. Moving right along then, we've got one of the best deluxe class figures I've got, which is Titans Return Trigger Happy. Brilliant jet mode, brilliant robot mode, and he's one of the few figures that I kind of forget he has a Titan Master going on. Next to him, we have Power Core Combiners, Ice Pick, and Chain Claw. These are some of my oldest Decepticons. I think I got them back in like 2013. And while Power Core Combiners is kind of like ignored by most people nowadays, I still really love it. Would love to see if I could find some drones to connect up with him. Below them, we've got Siege Laserbeak. I really love the visor head he's got going on. And I used him as a basis for my 3D printed one. Papa, stuff you. Next up, we got Legacy Crasher, who again, has a video out. So go check it out, link below. The TLDR, she's a good figure. Again, tricky to find. So if you can, do. Earthrise Starscream's next. And despite using a lot of the engineering from the classics toy from 10 years ago, he's still really fun. I really like the way the cockpit goes inside the chest and everything, and he's got pretty decent articulation too. Plus, every Decepticon shelf needs a Starscream to sit there scheming. On the far right, we have Titans Return Six Shot, with his Titan Master Revolver. I love this figure. I love triple changes, so to have one that's a six changer, it's kind of nuts. Sure, the alt modes are a little bit futuristic, but I think they're all fun. And finally, we have Siege Megatron sitting proud and center to command all the Decepticons. I much prefer this to the Earthrise mold with the weird face, and I quite like the battle damage that Siege had. 
Moving on up to the shelf above, it's the Beast Wars display. We've got a mixture of kingdom figures, like Dinobot, who I did a video on like a year ago now, jeez. Air Razor, Optimus Primal, Black Arachnia, Shadow Panther, one of my favorites, Waspinator. We do have an Oddball, Cyberverse Cheetor, he's my only cheetor and I like the mold. And a few reissues as well of characters that don't have a kingdom toy. This includes Cybershark, who I love that toothy grin. Retrax, it's a pill bug transformer? Who has a crushing hug attack? He does not pose well, but he's a fun toy. And finally, K9, who I might be doing something a little more bluish later down the line. We're now nearing the end, it's time for my 86 display. As most of you will know, the 86 movie is what got me into Transformers, so they needed a diorama and display of their own. And there is a video on how I made this diorama from a few months back now. Going from right to left, we have 86 Sweep. I prefer the brighter blue colors than Scourge, and he's a really good mold. Sure, he's a shell former, but he does it well. Kingdom Cyclonus. He's up there with Legacy Blaster and Kingdom Rodimus for me as best figures I own. The way that nose cone all just fits inside his chest, I wish they would copy it for one of the Seekers. It just means he's so kibble free. Next we have Kingdom Galvatron. Galvatron's one of my favorite Decepticons, and when they did him in Kingdom, all done up as a leader class and all the fancy articulation stuff, I was beside myself. He fixes some of the minor issues I've got with the Titans Return one, like the face being a bit more pronounced, and the cannon actually going on the side of the arm instead of the front. Plus he's got two ports, so it can move around independently a bit more. Next up we got Siege Ultra Magnus, another leader class favorite of mine. I much prefer this to the Kingdom one. I always feel like if there's a Siege version of the character, it's probably better because that's what they were designed first. Moving on over, we have 86 Retgar. He's a junkion, he's voiced by Eric Idle, the actual mold itself is really well put together, and that mustache. All of that put together, he's just a favorite of mine. Next up, Thrilling 30 Springer, a figure I've had since 2014. No, that's like nine years ago. I'm getting old now. All the modes seem to be well put together, and he's based on the comics version with the records. Sliding on down, we have 86 Hot Rod. That's my third, or well, fourth one, I guess. Sure, he's a deluxe-sized Voyager, but it means they can pack a lot into him. He's got his visors, the flip-out peg to throw out the saw blade, the welding torch, matrix, fire, guns, just so much. And he's super, super accurate as well, which I love. Now we got Earthrise RC, another figure that I did a review on a year ago now. And unlike most of you, I actually really like the Earthrise mold. I find the 86 one has its own issues, and the Thrilling 30s is not my favorite. And finally for this shelf, we have 86 Daniel. He looks like he kind of needs to use the bathroom all the time. Mm, try not to do it in the suit, eh? Alright, here we go. The final shelf layer. Starting from left to right, we've got my Season 1 Autobots. So this is Jazz who I absolutely adore. He does have a clear backpack that wants to explode, so just be careful with it. I've managed to get by. We've also got Siege Ironhide, one of my favorite War for Cybertron figures, who also has a video, just like his friend here, Huffer. A little small for a deluxe, but he's got some fun stuff going on. Like how he can actually tow Earthrise Optimus' trailer in vehicle mode. That's a neat trick. Below them, we have Combiner Wars Windcharger, and Titans Return, Brawn, and Bumblebee. I quite like Legends class, and seeing these three all up front is quite fun. Sliding all the way to the right, yes, we're going to save those two for last, we have Cybertron Hotshot. He's missing a few pieces, but he's one of my oldest Autobots I've got. I think I got him sometime after that Cybertron Bumblebee. Beside them, we've got Velocitron Override. She's one of my favorite Voyages I've got, and she's got space for a Cyber Planet key. Next to her, we have my first ever Megatron, Combiner Wars Armada Megatron. I did a review on him once, like seven years ago. Gosh. I look a bit young, don't I? Beside him, we've got Armada Demolisher. Sadly miniconless, but he's still got them working missiles. And finally for these lot, we've got Cybertron. Well, technically universe, because it's a re-release. Undermine. I love the neon greens and them grabby hands sticking out the front of him. And now finally, it's time for the big lads. The ones up here. First up, we have the Kingdom Ark. He's got that last Autobot face, those giant blue thrusters down the front. And I mean, this is the first time he's ever had a robot mode and it looks so cool. Plus, it's huge. It's really tricky to convey scale on a video, but like, he's kind of like the size of a small cat or child. And he's got light piping. I really want to see if I can get some LEDs installed up there so you can glow with the rest of them. And now, finally, it's Cybertron Metroplex. 
my first ever Titan. I got him as a Christmas present and whoo, he's a little bit on the awesome side. <laughs> he's got really good quality plastic. I like the arc, but his is a bit flimsy. Metroplex here has none of that. Super crisp paint. The tampographs are applied really well. Each ratchet is locked in, which means that he can hold this giant spark drinker axe that's as tall as him. I just want to put this into I just want to put this into perspective. All right, most deluxes get a gun, a tiny gun. Like look at Earthrise RC, right? This is a Titan class with a freaking chainsaw axe that's as tall as him. It's kind of obscene. Plus, he's fully poseable, he's got an ab crunch, opening hands, ankle tilt, plus Earthrise ramp compatibility, so iWorks can connect up easily. Probably my favorite figure I own. So that's all the figures that are on my shelves. I've missed a couple of them, like some McDonald's figures, and some ones that are my desk toys, like Drift, Hot Rod, Bumblebee, also got a Dysling up in there. But that's all the figures I've got. Last time I counted, it was around 135. Huh. That's including every single Titan Master, every single little dude. Not including Combiners as a separate figure, because that's kind of weird. But yeah, I also have an itinerary. There you go. So Time Tinker, I hope you enjoyed that your request got answered. And if any of you have a preference over what figure I review next, then please let me know down below. I will eventually get round to all of them, but you get to decide which ones come first. Either way, I hope you enjoy me geeking out over toys, and I'll catch you next week. Farewell!